Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the previous videos, we have covered the entire Hadoop architecture as well as we have covered each and every component inside the Hadoop ecosystem. Now it's time to move on to an interesting topic of Apache Spark. So in this particular video, we will be having an introduction to Apache Spark. So let's have an overview of it. So Apache Spark is again a cluster computing technology same as what Hadoop does. But Apache Spark is lightning fast cluster computing technology. Now this Apache Spark, it extends the MapReduce model. So whatever terminologies we have seen inside the MapReduce architecture, the same architecture has been extended to a greater extent, adding more features and efficiency inside this Apache Spark. Now what makes it different from the normal Hadoop system? And the answer is that this Apache Spark supports various types of processing. Not only the batch processing which was covered inside the Hadoop system, but this Apache Spark supports real-time stream processing also, as well as graph processing. And that too at a very faster pace. So now you might be wondering that how this Apache Spark is faster than the Hadoop system. And the reason is that it performs in-memory cluster computing which means that the data is stored inside the random access memory which is RAM instead of some slow disk drives and also it is processed in a parallel manner. This makes the querying and processing extremely fast. So that was an overview of the Apache Spark. Now it's time to look into the components that this Spark contains. So the major component inside the Spark is the Spark Core. On top of that we have Spark Streaming then it contains mllib which is nothing but machine learning libraries next we have spark sql and the last component is graphx so let's have a look at all these components one by one starting with spark core so it provides the in-memory computation capability as we have discussed in the overview that because of this reason of in-memory computation the spark is way much faster than hadoop systems and for having this feature, Spark Core is responsible. Next, it is the backbone of the parallel distributed processing. As we have discussed, the data is stored in RAM and it is parallelly processed. Spark Core is responsible for providing all the functionalities for it. It holds all the components for efficient scheduling of the jobs and monitoring them so that it can be done in given time. So in short, Spark Core is responsible for executing all the functionalities smoothly. So now let's have a look at the next component which is Spark Streaming. So as we have already discussed that Spark supports many types of processing of data. It supports real-time data processing with the help of this component Spark Streaming. A quick question for you all. Comment down whether Hadoop supports real-time data processing or not. So let's come back to Spark Streaming. So this component accepts the data from variety of sources. Now it may also include the sources from Flume, Kafka and many more. If you don't know what Flume is, then check the Hadoop ecosystem video. In that I have explained all these components. Note one thing that Spark Streaming uses the technique of micro batching to process the real time streaming data, which means it groups the streaming data into batches and then process the data inside the batches individually. So that was about Spark Streaming. Now let's move on to the another component which is MLLib, which is nothing but machine learning library. It contains different machine learning algorithms. These algorithms can be for performing regression, classification or clustering. And all these algorithms are very much efficient and reliable that it can process very huge amount of data in an efficient manner. This component also includes many statistical techniques, for example, hypothesis testing, which means to check whether the given sample is from the same population. Next, it also contains many correlations algorithm to check whether the attributes are correlated with each other or not. It can also perform principal component analysis and many more other statistical techniques. If you remember when we were discussing Hadoop system, it contains Apache Mahout, 
which also contained many machine learning algorithms for performing different machine learning ta tasks. But if we compare Spark ML Lib with the Apache Mahout, then Spark ML library is many times faster than Apache Mahout. Now let's move on to the next component which is Spark SQL. So by the name itself, it tells that it supports structured data. I hope you remember what structured data is. It contains a specified schema. Now the Spark SQL supports JDBC which is Java Database Connectivity and ODBC which means Open Database Connectivity. Now these two connectivities makes it possible for applications to access data from different databases. Now it access and deals with the data through the SQL which is Structured Query Language and the Hive QL which is Hive Query Language for querying the data. This component makes it user friendly to deal with huge amount of data using the SQL and Hive QL. And one more good advantage of this component is that it is proven to be powerful for both streaming as well as the historical static data. So in short, it makes this huge task easier to perform. Now let's move on to the last component of Spark, which is graphics. So this graphics is nothing but an API or you can also say it as a library for dealing with graphs. And also it, it can deal with graph parallel computations. I hope you know that a graph contains two things, edges and the nodes. The node stores the data and the edges defines the relationship between the nodes in which the data is stored. It also facilitates to create a, a directed graph with all the important properties attached to each node as well as edges. Now for computation as well as processing, it supports different operations such as subgraphs, join vertices and aggregate messages. Just have a note of the names of these operations that can be performed in graph computations through this component graphics. So now I hope that you guys have got an overview of all these components that are present inside the Spark. If you guys get any doubt regarding the components of Spark, then you can comment down your doubts. Now let's have a look at the ways to deploy the Spark in a Hadoop cluster. So there are three ways. First is the standalone way. The second way is Spark over YAN. And the third way is Spark in MapReduce which is commonly called as SIMR. So let's have a look at all these ways one by one, starting with standalone. So in this particular way, the Spark component comes on top of HDFS, which is Hadoop distributed file system. So the diagram looks something like this. The Spark is on the top of HDFS. As you can see, Spark occupies space on top of HDFS. And in this way, the Spark component as well as the MapReduce component both runs side by side to perform all the Spark jobs on a particular cluster. So just remember Spark and MapReduce runs side by side. So the next way to deploy the Spark on Hadoop cluster is the Spark over YAN. So you can see that YAN comes on top of HDFS and Spark comes on top of YAN component. Hence it is called as Spark over YAN. One of the speciality of using this particular way to deploy Spark is that it does not require any pre-installation and any computer inside a cluster can adapt this particular way. And through this way, Spark can be easily integrated with the entire Hadoop ecosystem and work efficiently. Now the next way to deploy the Spark inside the Hadoop cluster is the SIMR which is Spark in MapReduce. So you can see inside the diagram, first the HDFS comes over that the Hadoop MapReduce comes and inside the Hadoop MapReduce Spark gets the place. In this architecture you can see that Spark is inside the MapReduce hence the name is SIMR. Now this way is particularly for those users who don't use YAN yet. If you remember in the earlier generation of Hadoop YAN was not introduced. And note one thing that in this particular way launches Spark jobs on MapReduce. So I hope you guys have got all these three different ways to deploy the Spark inside the Hadoop cluster. 
If you guys get any doubt, then you can straight away put it in the comment section. Also, if you have any suggestions, then you can put that too inside the comment box. For more such videos, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on Instagram.